After Gail served a perfectly brewed cup of tea with milk and sugar, she pummeled a cushion and sat on the floor at Frank's feet, watching me closely. It's very unusual for an American to drink tea. I lived in Chelsea for several years. She rattled off a list of English pop stars she'd met there, which seemed to be just about everyone with a top ten hit. How did you meet them? You go to clubs and you stand there, and before you know it, Jerry and the Pacemakers or Jimmy Page or Jeff Beck is standing next to you, you know? I desperately hoped for a few minutes alone with Frank to reassure myself that we could still tease each other. It looked like my only chance would be on leaving when he would escort me to the taxi. But when I stretched and pleaded jet lag, it was not Frank, but Gail, who followed me out. So we two girls stood alone at 3.30 in the morning, Gail fearless while I shivered in that frightening and dangerous city. I thanked Gail for inviting me over. She said, I can never invite a guy, though. One time, we were walking along the street here in New York, and I saw this guy I used to know before I knew Frank. He was on the other side of the street, and I ran over to say hi. I really only talked to him for a couple of minutes. It was not flirtatious or anything. But when I crossed back, Frank's face was like black with fury. I couldn't believe it. He said, don't ever do that again. If you do, you're out. Subject closed. And he stormed off, leaving me standing there. And I know he means it, so... Out of the gloom, a taxi arrived, and Gail hugged me. Good to meet you, Pauline. As the taxi rocked up 6th Avenue, forcing me to hang on to the strap, I felt both elated and disappointed. Frank was married, and that was that. I would probably never see him again. I looked down. In my hand, I held the piece of paper on which Frank had written his phone number. <laughs>